Massive tornadoes terrify the heartland. Oh my God. This is a big tornado right here. 15 twisters touching down, destroying homes, wreaking havoc on roads. Now 24 million from Texas to Iowa on alert for more severe weather. Donald Trump unleashing a wave of new attacks, hitting hard at Hillary and Bill Clinton. Hillary Clinton's husband abused women more than any man that we know of in the history of politics, right? And taking on his own party leaders. His feud with Paul Ryan escalating. Trump saying he does not need his backing. Air scare. Delta 762, are you able to exit the runway? Where we'd like to get the emergency equipment behind it. A Delta flight forced to make an emergency landing after turbulence rips off the engine cover. 109 passengers on board, the frantic race to safety. This is my fight song. An ABC News exclusive honoring our heroes. First Lady Michelle Obama and Prince Harry open up as they kick off the Invictus Games. Once they take that uniform off, they're still looking for ways to serve, and we can't waste that talent. Their mission, shining a spotlight on injuries, both visible and invisible. You can find coping mechanisms, and you can get your life back on track. Celebrating the incredible competitors from around the world who have overcome all the odds, only on GMA. Good morning, America! Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. And Good Morning America, happy Monday. What a spectacular start to the Invictus Games, that opening ceremony last night, so moving. And we just saw Robin down in, there in Orlando with a nice crowd this morning. Hey, Robin. So much excitement, George, so much excitement for these Invictus Games. We are celebrating. giving their all to their respective countries. And I hope that you were there for, for the opening ceremony. Wasn't that something last night? Oh, there was a moment when this veteran, Staff Sergeant August O'Neill, rappelled down a helicopter to deliver the Invictus Games flag to his partner, Kai, the dog, racing to meet him. And then the two delivering the flag together? That was a special moment. We're going to have a lot more on the games and my interview with First Lady Michelle Obama and Prince Harry. Yes, yes, they did not hold back. Trust me on that. And we'll have that coming up in just a little bit. George. Oh, we are so looking forward to that, Robin. So many powerful moments last night. I loved when Mrs. Obama called Prince Harry our Prince Charming. He truly is. Wow. And, and as you said, he's found his passion. We're going to learn a lot more about that coming up. But right now, we want to get to those twisters that are tearing through the Midwest. Millions in their path from Colorado, Oklahoma. ABC's Kena Whitworth is in Oklahoma City with the latest. Good morning, Kena. George, good morning. So today, 24 million Americans are still under a severe weather threat. And here in Oklahoma, people have their eyes on the skies and their storm shelters ready to go. Oh, my God. Tornadoes terrifying the heartland. This is a big tornado right here. And in Colorado, this massive funnel cloud hovering over the road and then consuming everything in its path. Wow, look at that. Drivers stopped in their tracks trying to flee as this tornado moves across the road. At least seven reported tornadoes touching down in the Centennial State over the weekend. We have windows broken out. It's not pretty. This mammoth twister captured near the town of Ray, kicking up debris, injuring five people. You can see from the air, numerous structures destroyed. Overnight, people in Oklahoma on edge. This tornado continues on the ground right now. Multiple reports of tornadoes there as well. Rains leading to flash floods, stranding motorists. In Kentucky, blinding rains blasting cars. And in Illinois, 66 mile per hour winds snapping power lines and tearing the roof off this school. When storms like that move through, shelters like these can save people that don't have a way to get underground. It's reinforced concrete, and then they climb through these steel doors to ride out the storm. George. Okay, Kenna, thanks very much. The storms are still moving, and Rob's got more on that. She mentioned the threat, George. I want to show you that area. We have some jet stream energy that's going to power some storms east of Dallas today. The Arklatech region, Tulsa to Little Rock. You'll see some large hail, some strong winds, and maybe a couple of tornadoes as well. We're kind of in this active pattern where the next two or three days we'll see some active severe weather and maybe some heavy rain as well. One more look at that Ray, Colorado tornado over the weekend on Saturday. Rarely do we get footage like this. This is special effects, Hollywood twister type of stuff, except it's the real 
real deal. An EF2 tornado with 130 mile an hour winds. Look at that. Something about the northeastern Colorado soil that makes it look fantastic. We admire the beauty, but as always, we re respect the power. And it George. looked like cars were driving into that, Rob. They got awfully close. Those were storm chasers uh, pushing their luck. Yeah. Oh, All right, Rob, thank you. Well, now to the race for the White House and Donald Trump in a showdown with Hillary Clinton and Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan, who has yet to endorse the presumptive nominee. ABC's Tom Yamas is at Trump headquarters right here in New York with the very latest. Good morning to you, Tom. Amy, good morning to you. Trump says he was blindsided by Ryan's lack of commitment and over the weekend, Trump unleashing on the Clintons in some of his fiercest comments to date. Hillary Clinton's husband abused women more than any man that we know of in the history of politics, right? Donald Trump showing nothing is off limits in his road to the White House. The presumptive Republican nominee spotlighting the Clintons' darkest days, trying to tie Hillary Clinton to her husband's affair with Monica Lewinsky in the fight for female voters. She was a total enabler. She would go after these women and destroy their lives. And they're going after me with women? Give me a break, folks. Trump making it clear President Bill Clinton is fair game, even though Trump's opinion on Clinton's sex scandals has evolved. Here's a guy, he was impeached because he lied. He lied. You remember the famous, I did not have sex with that woman. And then a couple of months later, I'm guilty. But back in 2008, Trump had a much different take. I mean, look at the trouble Bill Clinton got into with something that was totally unimportant. And they tried to impeach him, which was nonsense. The billionaire also saying this about women in America. I mean, all of the men, we're petrified to speak to women anymore. We may raise our voice. You know what? The women get it better than we do, folks. This as Trump is also fighting some of the most powerful people in his own party. House Speaker Paul Ryan announcing last week he's not ready to endorse Donald Trump. Uh, I'm just not ready to do that at this point. I'm not there right now. Trump firing back, suggesting to George he may not commit to supporting Ryan as chair of the upcoming GOP convention in Cleveland. Can Paul Ryan chair the convention if he doesn't endorse you? Well, that's a question you're going to have to ask him and Ryan but and I guess me. Yeah, that's why I'm asking uh, you that. Do you want me. him to? Look, I've had so much support. I've had support from all the people that Paul Ryan works with. I mean, and insisting he can win even with a fractured Republican Party. But if the party's split, how do you win? Because I think I'm going to go out and I'm going to get millions of people from the Democrats. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And Sarah Palin not happy about Speaker Ryan's lack of support. She's now vowing to take down Ryan in his next election because she's a huge Trump supporter. Ryan and Trump set to meet this Thursday. George? Okay, Tom, thanks very much. Let's move on now to Hillary Clinton. She's still in a race with Bernie Sanders, but taking on Donald Trump, trying to take advantage of that split in Republican ranks. ABC Cecilia Vega here with the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump aren't even officially in a one on one yet, but you wouldn't know that by the attacks that are flying. And now Clinton is hoping a Trump candidacy might scare off some in the Republican Party and send them her way. Donald Trump may have a nickname for Hillary Clinton. Crooked Hillary Clinton. Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary. Crooked Hillary. But this morning, she has a new one for him, too. And there are presumptive nominee, otherwise called their presumptuous nominee. Clinton trying to brush off Trump's one-liners while also fending off lingering questions about her personal email server. Some of her closest aides, including longtime advisor Huma Abedin, recently questioned by the FBI. No one has reached out to me yet, but I'm more than ready to talk to anybody anytime. Clinton still locked in a primary fight with Bernie Sanders, but she is laser focused on the general election and not just winning over Democrats. Clinton is now trying to woo Republicans, too. I am asking people to come join this campaign, and I've had a lot of outreach from Republicans in the last days who uh, say that uh, they are interested in talking about that. But her continued struggle to seem more likable, ripe for SNL parody. President Barbie, the first Barbie commander-in-chief. A fake commercial about oh, President Barbie, the doll no one wants to play with. I just don't like her. She's too stiff.
<laughs> so much on SNL this season. Now, Bernie Sanders is still promising to stay in this race until the very end, but he did offer a new hint that he might be open to talks with Clinton about a vice president slot. George, of course, as far as we know, those talks and that offer has not come yet. And we still have several primaries to go, Cecilia. Thanks very much. Let's talk to Matt Dad about all this right now. And Matt, let's begin with, with Donald Trump and the split inside the Republican Party, the feud with Paul Ryan. He surprised me. Uh, at the interview, I want to show a little bit of it right here where he said that bringing the party together may not matter that much. Does the party have to be together? Does it have to be unified? I'm very different than everybody else, perhaps, that's ever run for office. I actually don't think so. Think His point is that he can bring in a lot of Democrats and independents. Is he right? Well, he's right about one thing. He's very different than anybody that's run for office before, so he's right about that. I think he's right that he doesn't have to have the elites behind him. But he needs to have almost 100% support of the Republican voters. So as long if the split stays with the elites, he's fine. But if the split starts emerging among Republican voters, it's hugely problematic for him. Yeah, that's right. Back in 2012, Mitt Romney got more than 90% of Republican voters, and he still lost. So Trump would have to kind of match that. Meanwhile, looking at the general election and this feud with uh, with Hillary Clinton over, he believes that bringing up Bill Clinton's troubles back in the 1990s is an effective counter to the women's card. Well, I, I think it, I think it, this is an issue many Republicans have been wanting to litigate for 20-something years in the course of this. And I think what he's trying to do is not attack Bill Clinton, but basically say Hillary Clinton, who claims to speak on behalf of women voters, really is problematic in this area in this course of this. I think this is going to be a back and forth. I think it's going to generate some support for Donald Trump among the base of this. I don't think it's going to have any effect on independent voters in the course of this race. Okay, Matt Dowd, thanks very much. All right, George, we turn now to that deadly shooting spree in Maryland. A federal police officer in custody accused of going on a rampage that left his wife and two others dead. He is now formally charged with three counts of murder and set to appear in court today. ABC's Pierre Thomas has the very latest. The final takedown caught on surveillance as authorities arrest one of their own, a federal police officer accused of killing his estranged wife and two apparent strangers in wanton acts of random violence. Watch as police ram his car, jump out, draw their weapons. It all began Thursday afternoon. Eulalio Tordillo arrives at a Maryland high school and allegedly shoots a man and viciously kills his wife Gladys in cold blood, shooting her repeatedly just as her daughter was to leave. Tordillo, a police officer with the Federal Protective Service, had been on administrative leave after a court order demanding that he stay away from his wife, who he had been accused of beating. We just had a shooting at Montgomery Mall. Down. On Friday at Maryland's Montgomery Mall, shots ring out as Tordill allegedly attempts to carjack a woman. Two men rush to her aid. They're both shot. Malcolm Winfield died at a local hospital, and the other man remains in serious condition. The female victim is also recovering. These two men acted selflessly and heroically, not only coming to her aid, but likely saving her life. Ten miles away, a short while later, Tordillo is accused of fatally shooting Claudina Molina in what they also believe was a botched carjacking attempt. Authorities say over the weekend, Tordillo did talk, apparently showing no remorse. No one expects him to be released after today's hearing. George? I bet not. Okay, Pierre, thanks very much. We're going to get the latest now on that backlash brewing at West Point over this photo. It shows 16 female cadets, fist raised, and now the school is investigating whether the cadets were making a political statement in violation of academy rules. ABC's Ryan Smith is here with the story. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, George. For decades, the clenched fist has had powerful meaning, solidarity, strength, defiance, or resistance. And while a mentor says the women intended to celebrate that graduation like a sports team raising helmets after a big win, the gesture leading West Point to see if rules were broken. This morning, this photo is at the center of a growing controversy at West Point. The elite military academy now investigating whether these 16 African-American cadets raising their clenched fists violated a policy against political activity while in uniform. There's a tradition at West Point for seniors where they pose and they have a very stoic look on their face intended to be a throwback to the old days. What makes this photo different is everyone's kind of doing the pose, but then there's the clenched fist in the air. To critics of the picture posted on social media last week, the cadet's pose looks like an expression of support for the Black Lives Matter movement. A movement some believe is anti-police. If these men and women are in uniform 
and they're making a political statement. They could run afoul of a Defense Department regulation, and they could be in serious trouble for that. Coming to the cadet's defense, the chairwoman of the Academy's Board of Visitors and former Army Captain Brenda Sue Fulton tweeting a different photo of the same women posing without fists raised, writing, fearless, flawless, fierce, ready. Fulton telling the Army Times, I knew it was their expression of pride and unity. Unfortunately, in their youth and exuberance, it appears that they didn't stop to think that it might have any political context. Let's get the firestorm coming only a few months after Beyonce's formation halftime show. The fists raised there, also causing controversy. This morning, West Point telling ABC News Academy officials are conducting an inquiry into the matter. The style of photo is a tradition at West Point. Groups mimicking the serious pose of cadets in the 19th century. The photo causing controversy reportedly just one of dozens they took without raised fists. It's unclear how long the inquiry could take or what consequences the women face. They graduate on May 21st, George. Okay, Ryan, thanks very much. And you've got this story, we showed it in the open, this air scare emergency landing. That's right, there was some very frightening moments aboard a passenger jet forced to make an emergency landing in Nashville. The Delta flight was going from Atlanta to Chicago Sunday afternoon, but it reportedly hit turbulence 30,000 feet up. And then look at that, with more than 100 people on board, one of the engine covers blew off and apparently hit another part of the plane, puncturing the fuselage. Thankfully, the plane landed safely. No one was injured. Another plane then took those passengers to Chicago. And, uh, Michael, I know we have some big lottery news. Yes, that was scary. This is um, some happy news for some one lucky person, the mystery winner of that $429 million Powerball. Now, the odds of getting those six numbers right are more than $290 million to one. And Lindsay Janice is at the 7-Eleven in Trent, New Jersey, where that lucky ticket was sold. Good morning, Lindsay. What do we, what do we know about the big winner? Well, good morning, Michael. The owners, the husband and wife owners of this 7-Eleven have turned into detectives watching surveillance video to try to figure out who this person is. They say they think it's a woman. They recognize her, a regular customer, a local. But whoever it was, get this, chose these numbers themselves, also opted for the lump sum worth $284 million. The owners say if it is indeed somebody local, they're thrilled by that because this is a tight-knit community that they say really could use the boost. Michael? Well, we know in a a lot of a lot of states you have to declare the winner do you have to come forward if you're the winner in new jersey in the state of new jersey you do have to come forward publicly we're hoping to learn more about who the lucky winner is when lottery officials give a press conference a news conference a little later on today but this 430 million dollar jackpot is the sixth largest in powerball history the second biggest jackpot ever won by a single ticket holder and these owners of the 7-eleven they get thirty thousand dollars they say they're going to use some of it to go on a dream vacation to Alaska, Michael. You know, that, well, we know nobody here won it. We're all at work today. <laughs> but congratulations to the lucky winner. Congratulations to you, George. That is a great story. Now let's go to Rob. And Rob, he's got some good news coming to us. Yeah, it's kind of been Alaskan cool around here the last uh, week or so. We've got a chilly start. Uh, for May, at least this morning across the Northeast, but we'll rebound nicely. This is not going to be rain free, but temperatures in the 60s and 70s, so that'll feel good, especially after the gloomy week last week. Your local forecast is 30 seconds away, but first, your select cities brought to you by PetSmart. Morning, buddy. You know what you like and what makes your dog's breed special. So make sure you feed your best friend the right food made just for him. PetSmart can help with Royal Canin Breed Health Nutrition Formulas to meet his breed's unique needs. Let's go, buddy. At PetSmart, spend $10 on any Royal Canin pet food and save $10 on your next Royal Canin purchase. Good morning, Washington. Here we go again, a rather unsettled weather pattern setting up for the rest of the work week. It's not going to rain every minute and spotty showers are expected most likely in the midday hours for today. So expect increasing clouds, spotty showers, especially late morning through the early afternoon with temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. Tonight, cloudy skies, a few showers possible, temperatures in the mid 50s. And tomorrow, I think we'll see more clouds with temperatures in the 60s, a little bit warmer for the middle of the week. 
And coming up, the real life reporting team behind Spotlight, the Oscar winning movie breaks open a new case. The secrets they uncovered inside some of the country's most prestigious prep schools. And that ABC News exclusive, Michelle Obama and Prince Harry opening up about the Invictus Games and shining a light on the amazing competitors. Robin has the latest from Orlando. Robin? Uh, Amy, as you said, what Mrs. Obama said about the.